Hey guys, one of the things that Santa Claus brought me this year was this blast cabinet. Very thankful for that. It's very, very cool. It took about, oh, I don't know, like maybe half a day to put it together. All these fasteners have to be put in and there's a lot of like prep work you have to do. You have to caulk all the seams. I'm not going to go into all that. There's lots of YouTube videos that cover that, but um, also got the dust deputy down here. Haven't installed it yet. Got a new uh, blasting gun because the one that comes with it's a piece of junk. Anyway. One thing that is different about this cabinet that is uh, from all the other videos out there is that this one comes with an LED light bar, so it's low voltage. It still sucks. It's not that great. Uh, it might be better than the old one. I mean, the ones that are uh, fluorescent based, I don't know. Uh, but when you're blasting, it's still very difficult to see in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade this. And uh, obviously, this, you may or may not have the same blast cabinet, so this may not apply to you. But this is item number six. 8893 68893 from Harbor Freight. Same price, but again, it looks like they made some changes. There's no longer high voltage, it's just a low voltage cord to uh, you know, one of those power bricks toggle switch on the side. So I'm going to do a little bit of a, an upgrade on those LED lights. I picked up these two LED strip lights on Amazon. I think they're about 15 bucks. They're Audu brand A U D E W, you know, another one of those uh, made up Amazon brand names. Um, they have two rows of LED lights each. They run on a 12 volt power supply. Um, and they just got two, you know, positive and negative wires coming out of each one. So pretty straightforward. However, and you guys, I'm sure can't read this cause I can barely read it. The AC adapter that comes with the blast cabinet is five volts, 500 milliamps. So that ain't going to work. Those are 12 volt light strips. And I believe they're going to need about an amp of current. Um, been a couple days since I did the math, but that seems right to me. I found this uh, 12 volt, 1250 milliamp uh, power brick in my bag of tricks. I save all these things anytime I have electronics because you never know when you're going to need them. So this one should power those lights just fine. So now let's, uh, let's rig them up and see if we can figure out how to make this work. I'll uh, we'll probably have to drill some holes in the top of the cabinet. It does come with double sided tape somewhere right there, but I have a feeling it's not going to survive very long in a blast cabinet. As you can see, they are quite bright. I just have them plugged into a little 12 volt UPS battery here that I have laying around. So I'm gonna have two of those. Should be a nice upgrade. Now I'm gonna try to do the best I can to prevent dust and grit ingress here. Like you see, there's this, what looks to be an electrical connector, but it's not, at least I don't see any contacts on the inside. So I'm gonna seal that up with, with hot glue. Um, there's a switch on this side. I don't know if I'm going to seal that or not. I'm just going to keep them on all the time. I'm going to reuse a switch on the side of the cabinet. Maybe I will. I don't know. Just to kind of show you how bright the light is inside, there's the stock light. And here's the just a single one of these 12 volt lights. Put it back a ways. Make it a more obvious comparison. I mean, just one of these lights up the whole, the whole cabinet pretty easily. But let's do two. I like to always test these things too to make sure they actually put out their rated voltage. And this one's pretty darn close. It started off at about eleven point five, and now it's kind of settled at about twelve point one, twelve point two. Yeah, always check. Okay, now let's say you have a power adapter uh, that has the same voltage, but the current rating is different. As long as the current rating of the adapter is higher than that of your load, that's totally fine. You just want to make sure it's not less. So uh, 1200 milliamps, 1250 MA, that's 1.25 amps. So if these lights, for example, needed 3 amps, this would not work because that 1.25 is less than the 3. Uh, but these lights, I think, like I said, I think I calculated you need about one amp or a thousand milliamps. We're at 1250. That should be fine. So the voltage matters. You want to match that to to whatever load you're powering. You don't want to power a five volt load with 12 volts or vice versa. And you have to make sure that the current rating of your power supply exceeds that of your load. Okay, I got the little electrical box off. I'm going to check the switch just to make sure it's rated for, for the 12 volts we're going to be sending it. Remember, we're not sending it... Uh, Five volts anymore and this switch is actually rated for 125 volts ac at 20 amps or 250 volts ac 
at 16 amps, that's well above what we need. So this switch will be fine. I've been giving this some thought. I'm trying to come up with a good balance between serviceability and protection of the lights. I'm thinking that I'm probably going to install these lights so that they are removed and installed as an assembly. So I'm going to have this wire bend this way and have a cable. So this will be across the top of the box. And I'll have a cable come over from here, this junction point, all the way to the inside of that electrical box I took off on the left. Um, so if these lights ever need to come out, they'll be removed as an assembly. I think that's the best way to do it. I hope. Uh, but first, like I said, let's seal up some of these openings here just so we don't get any grit in there any more than we have to. Best efforts. Old light out. And uh, I actually stole some old appliance power cord for an old floor steamer in that weather pack connector right there. Or I, I don't know if it's liquid tight or technically what it is, but that connector from this cable actually fit perfectly over this cable. So I'm just going to steal a, you know, maybe a foot or two from this old appliance cord. I'm going to wire it up uh, here, put some heat shrink tape on there, um, and wrap the thing together. So we're going to use the black wire for red and use the white wire um, uh, to the black wire here. Um, wire color doesn't really matter as long as you, you're consistent. So if you go red to red, red, black to black on the lights and tie all the, all the reds, reds to either the black or the, or the white. And again, this is all low voltage. This is going to get plugged into this transformer here. So it's not like we're going to, to a wall socket or anything. So I got a big section of heat shrink tape right here sitting on this cable. I have two smaller sections of heat shrink tubing here on the black and the white. And I've connected both reds from the lights together. I've connected both blacks from the lights together. Now it's time to solder these two joints right here. I'm not going to be able to do that one-handed. Sorry, guys. Okay, those solder joints are done. Now we got to put the heat shrink tape over each joint. Um, heat shrink that together. Then we'll put the heat shrink tape from over here over the whole assembly and heat shrink that together. Now we'll slide this white heat shrink tube over these two joints up to about here or so, and then we'll heat shrink that whole thing together. Okay, that side's all done. Now that the hot glue gun is warmed up, let's go ahead and seal these ends here. Okay, I got that end sealed up with hot glue. It's just drying, and we'll do the other one. I made some Sharpie marks on the cabinet uh, for tentative mounting positions for the lights, but I'm not going to drill any holes in the cabinet until I wire everything up and I confirm that's where I want the lights. I don't want there to be any like weird reflective glare or something like that. So I got them marked, I think, six and a half inches from the either end and the, uh, six inches in between. So there's two mounting brackets per light. So one bracket will be there, one will be there, one will be there, one will be there. So again, six and a half from each end and six inches in between. So we'll give that a shot. But first, let's wire up the light and make sure everything works okay. So I'm not going to, just, just for preserving things i'm going to try to salvage that connector right there i mean i don't know why they just don't use a standard barrel connector but i didn't make it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lop off the end of the connector that came with it i'm going to use that wire um i guess the connector in the wire segment as a pigtail to solder onto this all right so i just put some uh blade connectors on here the female variety those are going to clip onto the switch Then we'll hook it up and before we solder this together, make sure we don't have things backward. All right, got that hooked up. Got these wires just temporarily twisted together, plugged into the box, the switch plugged into the lights. Now I did check the polarity of the cable coming out of the AC adapter, the new one, and the polarity of the old one before I cut it. And they're actually reversed. So on this one, the white wire is positive. On this one, the white striped wire is negative. So I switched them at this junction here. So now let's flip the switch and see what happens. It should turn on. There we go. Cool. So let's button things up out here. Uh, and then we will adjust the final position of the lights. All right, this connection is done, all neat and tidy. Some would say I'm crazy for using two layers of heat, heat shrink tape, or heat shrink tubing, I should say. Uh, but I think it gives a much nicer appearance and it keeps things all neat and tied together. 
All right, so I put those lights on at approximately the position that they'll be in if I were to drill these holes, and I, I, I like it, so I'm gonna go with these, these positions here. Found a bunch of uh, 632 by 3 8 uh, nuts and screws uh, in my bag of tricks, so we're just gonna mount these uh, to the cabinet with these. Gonna drill some holes now. Okay, so there's both lights mounted. You can see it's quite a bit brighter in there. I would say that's night and day. So now we gotta button all this up over here. I'm gonna pull the excess wire, the slack wire through, just so we can close this up. Um, probably have to zip tie that wire up in there just to secure it a little bit better, cause it's just kind of dangling in the breeze. But uh, I think we're done. Okay, we got everything buttoned up. Just got to run a zip tie on that wire back there. And my little helper was instrumental in tightening some of those screws on the electrical box. That's impossible to do if you're one person because this thing opens on this side. You got to hold the screwdriver on the other side. Big help. So yeah, uh, I would definitely say this is a night and day uh, difference. Highly recommend doing this upgrade. It didn't really cost that much. I think the only materials I had to buy were the lights themselves. And like I said, they were about 15 bucks on Amazon. Uh, I believe they were Audu lights. Um, Everything else I had laying around, the screws, um, the wire, yeah, pretty much everything else. So, yeah, and the AC adapter, obviously. So, yeah, hopefully uh, this helps, helps out one of you guys that has one of these low-voltage boxes, the newer ones that aren't high-voltage. Um, if you thought this video was helpful, please subscribe and stay safe, everybody. Thanks a lot.